A large model showman's engine, this is part 31, making the axle assembly for the driving truck. Last week two quite heavy parcels arrived in the post. I think I'll start off this sequence with a tip. In fact, that's a bit of a pun. I'm only using the tip of the Stanley knife blade to cut through the packaging. That way the full length of the blade doesn't go into the things that are inside. And I suppose any injuries wouldn't be quite so serious if the blade was shorter. I always did look on the bright side. So here is package number one. I know exactly what's in these. But it's still like a game of pass the parcel for one and there's a prize every time. This package is full of steel parts and the steel parts are quite oily to prevent them from going rusty. So Matt at Blackgate's Engineering always wraps the parts in paper. The other package contains some guillotined brass parts. These are 3mm thick and will form the trim along the top and the bottom of the motion guards on the traction engine. Here you get the general idea but they will need bending and soldering in place. And yes, I already bought some brass to do this job, but it was a little bit too thin. In the same package were these, two pieces of 3 8 thick stainless steel, from which I will make a proper shovel and a firing iron, like a poker, so I can tend to the fire when the engine's in steam. The current shovel and the poker that I have are just far too short. My friend Bob Brocklehurst, who runs Pugnes Light Railway in Wakefield, is building me a riding truck. And one of these pieces of steel will form the axle. The riding truck has two 13-inch wheels, and here I made a template to see what the size was in the bearings. The advert said 5 8 but really they are actually 16 millimeters. This clip shows me measuring the template using my micrometer. To find the length of the axle, I'm using my scriber which I poke down through the bearing to the bench and then measure the scriber with the ruler. This means the part that I'm going to reduce to 16mm will be a bit longer than I really need it to be. Thinking about it, that would make a really good girlfriend joke, but on the grounds of good taste and the fact that I got told off a while back for some of the girlfriend jokes, I'll get straight on with the machining. You will notice that there were two pieces of bar. One of them was one inch in diameter, and this one that I'm using is three quarters of an inch in diameter. The difference being that on my small Boxford lathe, the one inch diameter piece of steel bar will not go through the spindle, but the three quarters of an inch piece of bar does. And in any case, I think it will be strong enough at three quarters of an inch. The axles are 60 millimeter or five eighths of an inch and I think that two pneumatic tyres on an axle of these dimensions will be fine to carry my weight. Once I've finished making this axle, my friend Bob will weld it to the main box section. When Bob and I were measuring up the size for the box section on which I sit, a strange thing happened. When we measured the distance from the towing bar to the centre of the seat, or the point where the seat will eventually fit, it was 16 inches. Then in the workshop I sat on a small stool just behind the traction engine. And this small stool was also 16 inches off the ground, which is where I need it to be to suit my physical shape. I've got short legs and a long body. Then we looked at the width and discussed where the wheels need to be. I suggested that they should be the same distance apart as the front wheels on the traction engine. These front wheels are just over 25 inches apart. Both Bob and myself took one wheel each and we put them on the ground. And when we set them to be 25 inches apart like the front wheels and measured the axle in between, guess what? The distance between the axles was 18 inches. But as you will see later on in this video, I need to make two one inch discs that slide onto the axle and can be welded in place. So an 18 inch space between the axles Minus the 2 inches for the discs is once again 16 inches. Today I'm not turning as well as I normally do and I wonder why this is. I've changed the tool tip and everything is ok. But even on the finishing cut I'm getting some rings in the work. And normally when I turn on this boxford I get a very good finish. I'm sure the experts will tell me what it is. But to save them writing in 
I figured out what this was. The entire axle passes through the headstock and sticks out of the other end. And it's wobbling a little bit. It's not a massive problem because using some emery cloth like this got rid of it and made the part look much better. But being wise after the event, and the next time I do this job I will try putting some packing around the long piece of bar that extends down the centre spindle. This will stop it resonating. And in theory I should get a better finish the next time I do it. Here's a piece of bar that I've just turned, sticking out of the wheel. It's a really good fit. I just need to shorten it, hence the felt tip pen mark. Now it's time to double check the measurements in between the wheels to mark off the position to turn the other end. Please note at this stage I didn't pack the bar where it goes down the spindle because I only noticed what was happening when I was editing the video. Here I'm centre drilling the end, mounting a live centre in place and then I can commence the turning. I've shortened these sequences. This is actually the finishing cut. And as you can see, as I turn this piece, there are still some lines in the work. But they're not as bad, and that's because the piece of bar that sticks right through the spindle is not quite as heavy as it was in the first part of the sequence. Therefore, the vibration and oscillation down the piece of bar is a bit less. Once again, though, it's not a problem. I just use some emery cloth to clean up the surface. This is more than good enough for the application. The important thing is the turn part of the axle is a perfect fit in the bearings. After I chopped the axles to the correct length, I recentered the ends, just from a cosmetic point of view. Time now to confirm that the measurements between the wheels are accurate. I'm pleased to say, yes, the measurements are accurate at 18 inches between the bearings. Now it's time to make a couple of spacers which have been turned from a piece of bar that are chopped into two pieces using the bandsaw. The procedure is as follows, face across the center, don't bother with the very middle bit because that's going to be drilled out. I started the job off by using a center drill as always, then I drilled a hole all the way through the work with a twist drill that was one imperial size under 5 16 of an inch, followed by a twist drill that was one imperial size under 3 8 of an inch. The final twist drill that I used was one imperial size under half an inch. And in case you're wondering why I'm using one imperial size under, and that's because I do not use these drills very often and therefore they are quite sharp. Eventually I used a boring tool to bore the hole just under three quarters of an inch in diameter. And I finished off the hole using a reamer that is three quarters of an inch in diameter put the lathe in back gear and reduce the speed to do this. That's the hole making out of the way. What I need to do now is just machine a register. And this is the part that will bear against the centre of the ball race. I suppose I could have used a washer for this, but it's best to have the part integral with the collar. And now by the magic of video, I have two matching collars that will sit on the axle and if necessary, both of these can be welded to the box section. Here's a close-up of one of the collars. In this clip, I'm checking that the distance between the outer part of the wheels corresponds with the traction engine wheels at the front. All I have to do now is make some nice brass bushes for the outer part of the wheels, and then drill across each end of the axle to take a split pin, and that will stop the wheels from falling off. The footrest part on the traction engine itself is just a mock-up and it's going to be similar to this but not quite. But I'll wait until my friend Bob comes over with his welding machine to do this. That's it from me in this episode. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.